Welcome everybody to our show. This is Custom Fab Garage on our channel Octane TV on YouTube. Make sure you go down below and hit that subscribe button. And on top of that, make sure that you hit the notification bell so that you can get all the new content that comes out weekly and even every day. This is the car that we're gonna be doing the new radio in, 2017 Mustang Roush Supercharged 6R80 car. And it did come with the absolute loveliest four inch calculator radio. So for all you four inch calculator radio guys out there, we're gonna show you what it's like to get into 2024 technology. So pay attention to this piece right here because it tells you how to put the screws in. And these are super, super tiny screws, which go in here, here, and here. And I used a number one. I tried to use like a precision one and it just didn't work good enough. But the problem with it is the way they designed this is this part when it goes down in here is so big it only can go down so far because of how thick this is so the precision screwdriver will go down in there but it it starts to strip the heads off so you have to be careful but you got one two three and it gives you an extra screw just in case the plugs for everything you have this is the sxm and then these are where all the plugs will plug into right here sorry about my lighting there's the antenna there's the blue port here, which is usually navigation, which yeah, that goes into the GPS part right here. And then you'll have this one as well for Wi-Fi. This is the main power plug. And, uh, oh, it's got HDMI, oh wow. So that's awesome. And then these are the factory plugs that'll plug into the factory HVAC here. And then we've already screwed this piece on. We'll take cigarette lighter out here. And then here's the factory USB, which I don't think it will retain that, but we'll see how that works. All the plugs every single plug that you're gonna need. And it gives you a USB of its own, so we might be able to incorporate that. Here's your mic, GPS antenna, Wi-Fi antenna, all your main power plugs with the USB extension, which is pretty cool. So hopefully we can plug this in here and still keep USB. And then this is all the module, and then the factory plugs right here that go into the actual Ford system. And I believe it does have an antenna adapter here for the Ford antenna adapter, which is a 40 EU 10. So it does come with every single thing here that will make it plug and play. We'll show you once we put these parts into here, what everything will plug into. Here is this piece right here. This is your can box right here where the white plug plugs into. This is if you have the 360 camera. These are all gonna plug into the factory harnesses. And then if you have a non-amplified like us, you will plug this together and that all runs into this here. And then here's all the collar codes that you'll see for all of these harnesses that you have a lot of harnesses here that will plug into the back. You know, you got your black here, green, and then red. And then down on the bottom, you've got like a white here and then like a tan here. And then down there, you've got like a gray, I believe. It's kind of hard to get gray down there on the bottom. I do have some open slots available. So there could be more as well. We've got our antenna, GPS and then Wi-Fi here. So we got a lot of stuff we got to plug in, test, make sure it works. And then we'll let you guys know how that all works. We did plug our rear view cam piece here. If I can get through all these cables, this has the backup camera, reverse camera input here. We did plug that into this here. 
So hopefully there is multiple ways you can do this. You can also do it this way with this one. It depends on what plug is in the vehicle. Okay, so we're going to remove this lovely radio. <laughs> Dude, Jesus, I forgot how small it is. It's like being back in a Ford Focus again. <laughs> so this is the worst radio ever put out by any manufacturer in a amazing vehicle. They stuck this into there. I mean, it's, this one even has CD. It's nostalgic. So we could probably sell this for a lot of money on eBay, like on Back to the Future. <laughs> I am a robot. <laughs> Disassemble. <laughs> okay. So we're gonna remove this four inch calculator radio. This is what it looks like before, so you guys can get an idea of exactly what this radio looks like before. To remove this radio from the factory, we're gonna start with pulling this piece off right here. We're gonna have to remove this whole entire long piece right here. So we gotta take this off first because there's two screws here and then the rest of it will all pop out. Okay, we're first gonna take this piece off right here. We'll take, yeah. Usually you wanna be delicate with it, but. <laughs> It's my car. It's his car and he's forceful. <laughs> he's manhandling it. You got it okay? Do you want my plastic pry tool? Yeah, probably the pry. Here you go, buddy. So first thing, we're gonna take off that piece over there on the very end. You wanna be very delicate with it because it is plastic and it's just got plastic clips in it. So you wanna be careful when you pull on that. So use a plastic pry tool. And then once you get that piece off, we're gonna start with this whole thing. We're gonna take this whole piece off right here. So we'll kind of show him taking off this piece right here. And it's got, the reason why it's getting caught up right there is because of the way the clips are set up. And they got like tape yeah. to hold it in place. Yeah, so that's why that's kind of being a butt. We'll try to get off there, see? And then you'll see the back of that so we can show him where those clips are. And that's where the clips are. That's why it kind of is a pain in the butt to get off of there. And then we're gonna take the rest of this, this longer piece off here. We're gonna pull this back. You okay? I apologize. Just pull it, you gotta pull it from the top too. So this thing has a lot of push pins and push clips on it that make it very, very, very hard to come off. Especially if it is the first time, it is a nightmare. And it is aluminum, so you wanna be careful. You don't wanna bend it. You don't wanna dent it because some people will dent the aluminum. Then you can see little dents in the aluminum. But once you start pulling on it, it will all come off in one big humongous piece. And you'll hear it creak and crack a little bit, but that's just because all the clips, you just gotta, you gotta kind of gently handle it and then kind of pull. You don't wanna yank it, cause when you yank it, you can break it or, or bend it. That's the biggest problem. Okay, got it? Pull right there. I can't get my arm right there, sorry. Ah, it's my knee! <laughs> <laughs> that. Now see, see these blue clips, they are very strong. His X actually left two inside of here. So we don't want to break any of these. We don't want to lose any of these because that will be a problem when you go to put this and then this will rattle. And they'll, and it goes they'll back clip in. right back onto there too. Yeah, they'll clip right back on there. You just got to be careful because they are plastic and they will fall. So we got to be careful when we take this radio out. Now the next step is we're going to take these. I believe they're seven millimeters and these two have to come out and that's how we get this radio out. All right, and we got a seven millimeter here we're going to take out and a seven millimeter right here we're going to take out. And don't drop the blue clips down the back of the dash because we almost just did that. So you gotta be careful. And then what you're gonna do is you're gonna pull on this. And you gotta be careful, you don't wanna break anything on this extremely expensive radio. <laughs> All right, so here's how we do it when you pull it. That bad boy will come forward. And then down here, I believe there is another screw that we're gonna have to take out. There usually is a screw right behind here. That's the only screw that we're gonna have to get to, but he has this thing right here. So we're gonna have to figure out how to get this off. And then there usually is a screw behind there. So down there in that little tray, you gotta get it out. Now I would probably recommend being really careful. This is his own car. That's why we're using metal on plastic, but you just gotta get this little cover panel off right here. And you gotta be very delicate. You don't wanna break anything. And I do have the little Oh rubber. yeah, take the rubber piece out first, that'll help. And those bolts are for the center console, but you can take those out too. Okay, we just got to get this cover plate off because usually there's a seven millimeter behind there, which is a paint. Oops, over there. Let me scratch it over here. Did you get it? Yep. Okay, right there. Boom. So once we get that cover panel off, actually, there's two seven millimeters. I forgot. I thought there was one. There's two seven millimeters right back there. Hiding. Mm -hmm. They're like, hey, what's up, guys? Can we come out and play? Nope, oh, there it is. Seven millimeter. Good. Now, the good thing about them being on the side, now some of them it's in the middle, 
but then you gotta move the shifter. So it's nice that they have two of them in here so that way we don't have to move the shifter to get these out. All right, we got both of those out. Now we can basically pull this bad boy out. Usually you can take it out by this, but his is getting caught up on that lighter. So we're gonna take these two sevens out. And then there's two sevens that are on the sides. So basically down here, we just pulled these off. You just pull these side panels off. They just come off with clips. And then there is a seven and a seven right there. And we're gonna pull both of those out of each side and then we can pull the console out. So we're gonna just basically pull the console back enough to where we can clear that cigarette lighter to come out because that stupid cigarette lighter gets caught. It's so dumb. And this console right here, it kind of separates right here. If you can see the brakes right here. This piece right here kind of pulls up and then this piece kind of separates itself and pulls back. It's kind of weird how it's worked. See how the brake is right here? So where this brake is right here is where this console part kind of pulls up and that's where it separates itself from the actual center console. It's kind of pain in the butt, I'm not gonna lie to you. But it's so nice, you rip this little mat up right here and then underneath there is two magical tins. And some change. And some change and a token for Pee Wee's Big Adventure. And I would advise using a deep well tin because the bolts stick up so far. And then the, once you remove those two 10 millimeters and then you remove these two sevens here and then two sevens from each side, this whole console should be able to go back. And then all we gotta do is get it to pull back just a little bit enough to clear that cigarette lighter. Ford, stop doing stupid stuff like this. Take this piece off right here. Basically this piece will snap up in the back right here. And it takes this transmission shifter piece up. Mm. Look at me go in the chrome. It didn't work left-handed. Ah, ah. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't need that. You good? Yeah, it's just working left-handed. Okay. I do know you gotta take this out, but I should just come right out. That's what she said. Jesus, that thing was tight like a tiger. Tight, like a tiger. Put that one in the skin box. You gotta keep her. <laughs> <laughs> so he just pulled this little piece out right here. We weaseled that out by pulling this up right here. But let's see if that pop, pops, up, pops it out. I think it'll come out now because that piece is out. Keyword, oh shit, I got the, my foot on the brake. No starts. Is it still coming out? No, maybe. Mm. Oh, it's coming out. We got it out. I don't think we're gonna get it back in though. <laughs> okay, so we got it out. So now we gotta, let, let's turn the car, we gotta turn the car off, but we gotta put it back in park. Yeah. Hold on here, we gotta put the car back in park. I think you're in reverse. No, you're in park, okay, we're good. So now the car's off, we gotta unplug all the plugs that are back here. So we gotta unplug all those to get this whole entire face off right here. So you got this big one right here that's easy to come out. You feel the plug? Then we got the European one right next to it. It's fat sausage fingers. <laughs> it's sausage fest. It really is a sausage fest. You know how those come off? Negative. Okay, you wanna hold this for me? Yes, sir. These are all like European. So they have. Oh fuck, it's taking me apart. <laughs> Alright, so we got the USB out. You have to take this top clip, pull up, bottom clip, pull down, and then that. What happened? I just turned it off. Oh, okay. And then this clip right here is becoming a problem because I think you have to push the bottom of it to get it out, and it's kind of a pain in the butt to get that whole clip out. There's the cigarette lighter plug. There's the two plugs if it'll get into focus, and then USB. So there's that bad boy. We got that out. Here is how this plug is in there. And then there's the bottom. So you have to get underneath it like he did and push this little bad boy up. And you gotta press it pretty hard. And you gotta press it really hard. It's it's not, and this is the same way. You gotta press right here to get this one out. USB is probably one of the hardest ones because you have to pull up on the flange and pull down on the bottom flange. So you have to pull, spread this to get this to come out. It's not easy to do. And then this bad boy is one of the easiest ones. You just press down on this bad boy right here. And when you press down on that, that will pull right out. So it, it doesn't look like, it's a lot of work, but it is to get this stuff out. Our next step, we have seven millimeters here on the bottom. We're gonna need to remove those two, those two on the bottom, and then these four right here to remove the calculator screen. So we're gonna have eight sevens that we need to remove in total. 
this strong man right here is gonna take all these eight out. <laughs> <laughs> I'm losing it. Now, in order to take the console out, the reason why you have to do that is because that cigarette lighter gets hung up. He figured out a way to manipulate it and we took the shifter piece out and we just took the plastic piece out to gain us the room that we needed. You kind of flirted it out a yeah. little bit and was able to snag it. But you gotta be careful because it's gonna be hard to get it back in here now. So that's gonna be the kind of kicker is, now I don't know how we're, maybe the cigarette lighter, we can figure out something on getting it back in there easier, but that's gonna be the hard part is getting that piece back in. We'll, we'll finagle it, we'll figure out a way. And then once we remove these eight, seven mils, we're gonna remove the CD slot and then remove the four, the four inch screen. Calculator. You got any CDs in there? No. Okay, thank God. There is, I don't know about it. <laughs> so you're gonna pull that bad boy out and then we're gonna unplug that. Same thing. Just one little plug. Now this is a European style plug. So what you'll want to do is you push down on this middle part right here. It's a cantilever system. So when you push down on that, that lever, I can't push down on my nails. It'll just break in half. So you push down the cantilever will pull forward. And then when it pulls forward, it'll pull itself out. It's pretty tight, man. Like maybe use the screwdriver. God, dude, why is it? Ford makes all their, sh their plastic where it, it's so difficult to push down. And then it makes it really tough to get these, these harnesses out of here and the plugs. Like I literally just broke a nail. Like it just busted my nail off trying to push down on that plastic. I know I sound like a sissy. <laughs> I broke a nail, ho. <laughs> Once you, so how this works is you push this, push this little guy down right here with your screwdriver and then this cantilever will allow it to come up and then you can pull the plug up. Just like BMWs, all BMWs use these. Boom, that's it right there. Okay, we're ready. We're gonna remove the CD portion slot. This is the dated part. Look at how big that brick is. That is a massive brick just for a CD mechanism. Weight reduction. So this car was made in 2017. So essentially this car is seven, eight years old. So, I mean, they don't even put CD slots in these anymore. Gen threes, they don't even put them in there. It doesn't look like you get a whole lot of room to pull the CD car. Imagine out. that. So That's Ford's lovely engineering, you know, hey, make screw you on being, yeah, make the wires as short as possible so you can't pull anything out. <laughs> they just love it. Speaking of that, screw you Ford. <laughs> the back of the CD mechanism, which is your antenna, and then your two main plugs. So over here, what were the plugs you unplugged? This one, this one. And then the antenna. So those are your three things. So you got antenna and your two main plugs. His car is weird. Um, I don't quit. You wanna shine that light on this? Yeah, that's weird. Most of them do not have this sitting here. So unfortunately, that could cause you problems if you're putting a double den in here because your double den needs to sit right here. Um, I, I hope ours doesn't, but if so, you're gonna have to take these off, take these seven millers and you're gonna have to relocate this down up underneath here because you have to have this available for the slot for the, the double den to sit in. These factory clips here and then this cigarette lighter here and we've got to move those over to here, cigarette lighter and then those yellow clips will go on each side here and here and then the usb we probably will take out and try to put it in here i don't know if it'll reuse it but we're going to try it just to make it see if it works all right so we uh, cut this out of the factory one and then we're going to put this into our new one right here okay so to get in here you're going to need three people because you're going to have to hold this push this and then pray to god you're going to not break everything <laughs> we got the yellow clips on each side and i'll tell you this is on any radio do you do from for these stupid clips right here they just do not work so everything is ready to plug into the car and now we can figure out what works and figure out how all this is going to equate <laughs> so you got three harnesses here that we ran down back through here through here and those three harnesses the ends of those is the bluetooth mic wi-fi and navigation antenna because those we're going to run onto the windshield and the a pillar but we're just going to set them down there on the floorboard for right now so we can test out everything to figure out what works and what's going to not work so these two plugs that we pulled off the back of the CD player. We ended up cutting, there's a little piece right here. We cut that piece right here to get us more of an extension and they plug into right here. So these harnesses that are coming off, we're gonna plug in right here to these two plugs. So remember that. And then these two plugs right here, I believe are gonna plug into these bottom two right here. We're gonna try that, but we don't have much room. So we'll wait to plug those in. So here is our mic one of the three wires that we ran that's for the microphone for the bluetooth this is our navigation antenna we have it right here 
Wi-Fi antenna, and then we did plug our antenna adapter in, so we gotta plug this part into the factory antenna. You have the four inch screen, you're gonna take this harness here, and where you unplug the four inch screen, you're gonna plug it into here, because we actually have the four inch screen. So that's what this is gonna use for the reverse camera, just to let you guys know. Plug this in here, and then plug this into the reverse cable lead. So this one says factory cam input, that's what we're gonna to try to plug it into. I believe that's the rear cam input, so we'll try that one first and see what happens. So that is our reverse cam input. Boom, baby, look, it's no longer four inches. So she said. <laughs> We're gonna remove this and it has four, see these four blue clips? One, two, three, and four, and they are hell to get out. So we used our plastic pry tool up underneath here and then pulled up and you gotta like pull up some serious force. So we're gonna take this part out of the equation and then up here we're gonna run our nav antenna up through this hole and then our wireless antenna. We're gonna run both of those up here and put them up here so they can go through plastic, they just can't go through metal. So we wanna put them up here. So we got nav antenna, Wi-Fi antenna all ran through that hole. And we did have to like finagle them through here just to let you guys know. feet right here they cause problems so we had to put them right there that way it would when it goes down it won't hit on anything Hopefully. the hardest part is getting these two bolts down in here now that this thing sticks out this far and getting that plastic piece back in just to let you guys know so that is definitely the most difficult part so as of right now let me try to turn my brightness down as of right now he's downloaded Netflix you know Google and YouTube as of right now, we have got YouTube to be able to work while not driving, which is really awesome that it does that. Um, you can actually watch the video, sorry. You can actually watch the video while we don't have the parking brake up. But if you click over here to video, you have to pull the parking brake to be able to use it. So put the parking brake back down, it doesn't work. But if you go up to home, and you go back to the apps and you go to YouTube, it does work. So that is something that we're noticing immediately right off bat. The quality is absolutely amazing. Like this has probably been one of the nicest quality, like as far as the pixelation and the quality of all the screens that I've seen that are the Tesla style. Most of them are extremely pixelated. The quality and resolution is really poor. This one's really, 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 really nice. And I, I really like how they do like on the home button when you click on it, I really like how clean this looks. It looks like a tablet. It looks like our looks like our phones being Android. So it looks really clean how all these are set up. So I really like the way this works. You have our, your hard button HVAC um, over here, and then you also have HVAC as well when you when you when you use the HVAC. So when you click this up, it brings up your digital portions here too, which is pretty cool that you can just use the button over here and then also pull up the digital portion here which is pretty nice so all this works really well you can also go over to here use the volume button and that works just the same as it does from factory which is pretty cool and you can do like your picture in picture i mean this is really really nice i mean when you consider that the factory one is only about four to five inches tall by about nine to ten inches diagonal this is double if not double and a half and way better resolution. The one biggest complaint I have about the factory Mustang, not even calculator, I'm talking about the upgraded premium, is it looks prehistoric on the background. They use a white background or a blue background and it looks terrible. So this looks super clear, super nice. It, it looks like 2023, 2024. It doesn't look like 1997. And if you have the poor four, four inch calculator, like this car had, dinosaur age. <laughs> So we are going to do some Still testing works. and R&D and everything with this. You know, everything's working with the HVAC. It even shows when your door and your hood and all that stuff is open, I'm guessing, through CAN bus. We're going to do a lot more trial and error with it. We just finally got it installed. But there's a lot of things like we can't get Wi-Fi in here. We can't get navigation because we're inside the garage. So we're going to have to go out and do some test driving, test out the app, see what works, see what doesn't work. 
you know what the quirks are what are great things but so far right now the volume the the music sounds great the youtube works hvac's good hvac's good you know steering wheel controls work so as of right now the bare necessities work we were going to try to get the usb's factory to work but we didn't have the right adapter because he had the four inch screen not the larger screen but there's a lot of things that we're going to do with this to see what we can make work best and then see what will work basic and then see what we need and what we don't need because a lot of things we may not even need so there's no point even putting a bunch of time into it if we don't even need it but as of right now this thing works really really nice so far and the quality of it is like all the buttons and the fitment and everything is really really clean and really nice like this is the way it should have been from ford they should have done something like this like the rams like the ram has something exactly set up like this for the Harman Kardon and the upper premium level they should have done this especially in the gt500 like for god's sakes like having a radio that's this big in a gt500 like come on guys like I can understand in like 97, 98, maybe even 99, but not in a $89,000 to $130,000 vehicle. You're putting a tiny little radio in that car. Like the worst is, I don't know if you know this, but the GT350, no matter what you get on the Cobra, it comes with a four inch cork calculator in those cars. Like, could you imagine buying a seventy, eighty thousand dollars vehicle and getting a four inch calculator? I've had to change many of those out in the GT350s. Well, so, it's gonna be nice here too, man, is, uh fact that the 24 is you know they got a pretty good size steering there there you go i never thought about that so you're actually stepping up from a 17 to like the 24 quality i mean i know it's vertical versus horizontal but man this is way bigger than that screen and probably the technology is going to be pretty close if not better so it's pretty nice so far but we'll make some update videos and kind of keep you guys going on what exactly we like what we don't like but as far as i go right now the push button start works flawlessly hvac works flawlessly i like that it actually has a volume knob not a up and down button which is a pain in the butt so you do have still like knobs with your eight your, your hazard and things like that you still have hard buttons and knobs so you can still be able to push this and it's and it's not like you have to push everything digitally or the soft buttons yeah which we is still really gotta nice. check to make sure that the uh the steering uh tightness okay and, we got to uh, change those check those yeah. and the one thing that's cool like right now it won't work but maybe it might work for reverse oh there we go and then our reverse camera works so we did have to plug that into a different plug where the four inch calculator was but reverse is actually working so that's pretty awesome that that works I mean, this is just a really, really nice upgrade, especially for the money. 10 out of 10 for me. Yep. When you click on the steering button, it will change your steering and everything. That is awesome. So everything is still working like factory on your actual hard okay. buttons over there. The traction, control right. traction control and everything it's is, like, is actually working with the like hard buttons. Off. Traction control on. Just a Diver, driver, yep, there you go. So all the hard buttons are working correctly. HVAC is working correctly. Start, stop, and volume. Everything is working like it's supposed to. Yeah, so really nice. Yeah, though. So you can change the main background, which is pretty cool. So he figured out how to change the actual background on the loading screen when it does come up, which is pretty cool. plug that in there's two usbs and you can plug that into the usbs and use your android auto yeah. or apple carplay whichever he's tried apple carplay on here and the apple carplay works great as yeah. well yeah, as long as you're wired so you can buy the device i've seen um an add-on accessory for wireless yeah so wireless which it doesn't bother me to but that's a big difference between the gen 2 the gen 3 
The big difference I've seen on these is they do not have Apple CarPlay or Android Auto. So if you want to use the video um, that's actually through their software, it's locked out. When yeah, in, when you have drive. to pull the e-brake. Yep, so it's, I mean, I'm in drive right now, but with my e-brake enabled, so it lets it, 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 lets it work. So if I actually, because it, it sees that, it sees that, that, that brake, see when he puts the brake down, because it reads that through cam bus. Yeah. So it knows when you've got that e-brake pulled up. So there's kind of no way around that because it runs through the CAN bus. If I could figure out a way to wire through that, I could, but I don't know how to do it on these. And there's really no need because that's if you want to use the yeah, video that's from you there. the default one right yeah, here. If you have viewers the same videos onto the, the radio itself uh, versus using like a USB drive, that would be the way to go there. But what's nice is, you know, you can run your apps and you can actually use YouTube and it bypasses that. Um, and actually, so, I mean, you can do, but there is no lockout for anything. You can do everything while you're driving. I mean, I don't. So if you use these apps right here, like a tablet, there is, you do not get locked out. You're almost backdooring it. So instead of you using these prompts that are built into the radio itself that knows that it has to lock you out, you can use these and it will not lock you out. So you can use Netflix, YouTube, all of those things. You can play those on here just like you would a tablet and it does not know that you have to have the bypass for the brake working which is awesome because even through sony and everybody else you cannot do that you cannot put netflix you cannot do that unless you backdoor it which you got to be careful about doing that but you can get everything to work on here just by using it like a tablet which is really cool i didn't know if it would do it or not so another thing I, uh so i was having issues with the climate um and again user error uh, I didn't really follow the instructions very well so um, in my case since we have the Mustang they have what's called a high and a low um, it basically just lets you know like the, since I have the calculator radio I did have the buttons on the bottom as far as like the traction control and stuff and another option is to have the toggles so in my case we had the other one and it was in the wrong setting so once I actually put it on the correct setting my climate control started working um, and then like you have all these hard <clears throat> buttons over here to do it too so you've got your buttons over here you've got all this stuff over here so you have you, you the cool thing is you still have all these buttons on the side which some of the other ones don't have that as well there's big differences i've seen in all these yeah so you still retain your the steering stiffness the traction control and i did notice like the traction control you got to be a little bit slower on hitting it um if you hit it too fast it, it doesn't like the actually going to sport mode which no big deal once you get used to the, the sensitivity it's it's not really a problem um, all the stuff that I had complaints of are not even complaints anymore because once I realized it was me not calibrating we had to right. figure out a lot of stuff and play with it yeah. the only thing we've not figured out so far is the Bluetooth with the mic doesn't sound as good as normal which could be a fault of the mic no oh, so I'd actually found out about that too so, so. Um, what it is is so the clip that comes with the the microphone since it actually is a plastic it has no uh, kind of vibration absorption whatsoever so i was clipping it onto my plastic a pillar since it's a mustang it vibrates quite a bit okay so what it's doing is that the vibrations picking up through the mic oh jesus yeah so what i did is i i took that clip off and i actually have it in the overhead console um, where my right lights are here yep right there and i don't have it actually clipped to anything i just kind of have it secured in there um and the sponge itself is holding it in place and I don't have any issues whatsoever. Okay, so see, there we go, yep. fix that part. So actually every complaint I had to this. So if you have a care. plastic A pillar like on the Mustangs, which is what this is in, which is what most of the links will are, is for like the F-250, the Mustangs, things like that, you definitely need to remember that when you're doing the Bluetooth mic because these are things that you have to learn by doing it and you won't know otherwise because there's not a lot of videos out on these radios to know what the you know the goods and the bads are yep as far as like video quality goes to um, can you play video on yours right now yeah so um, understand this is all my cell phone but <laughs> in picture in in real life when you see this it looks absolutely amazing like it looks the resolution is as good as my tablet my my samsung tablet it looks beautiful so netflix is your volume down yeah I'm probably sure. okay but the, the, the resolution of this screen is really nice for how large it is. Yeah. I mean, this is a large, large screen. If I remember right, I think they said it was a 1024 by 720. Yeah. So for a 720p screen, it's actually really, really good. Yeah. 
Um, it does have a little bit of light bleed at the top, but I've had devices that's had worse, so it's it's not really a huge deal. Um, it sucks my cell phone makes it look worse than what it is, but it's actually really good. trying to keep my this phone wants to make everything brighter than what it is so I'm trying to keep the brightness down so you can see how good the quality is but it looks amazing I mean it looks great I mean, look at how good the quality is and it's see right insane. now I'm not entirely sure why it's stretched out like it because it typically it isn't um, so it probably pulls the aspect ratio up. yeah so I, it, normally it's never done that so I don't know if that's the fault of that video but of course, I mean, actually, you know what? I bet you it's that launcher because when I was using it prior to that, it wouldn't do that. Um, my daughter watches, like, has been watching uh, My Little Pony on here. And, um, kind of funny, driving a Mustang. <laughs> <laughs> so, but uh, it wasn't, it was doing that at all. Um, like I said, every complaint I had has already been remedied. Um, I mean, look at the quality of that. Yeah, YouTube, that's actually probably a little better to see. And the quality of sound that comes out of this is actually really good because it's more power. So it's crazy how good every single thing is on this radio. Like, even when I was putting it in, the quality of the radio, the quality of everything is really, really good. I mean, I have zero complaints about it as well. I mean, it, it just does exactly what it's supposed to do. I mean, it's crazy. Yeah, and then you can still go to full screen just like anything else. As long as I don't fat finger it. One thing I do love, uh, you know, being from screen mirroring to my my screen before, you know, or well, Bluetooth to, you know, always have the latency with the mouth matching up with the words, and being that that's all in one deal now, I don't have to worry about it. Yeah, mine does that really bad. So, like, on my Android Auto, if you play videos and it goes through the Bluetooth part of the Android Auto, it's always, like, a one-second delay. It drives me nuts on my car, and that's a stock car, so... This looks awesome, man. Yeah. The quality is so nice. It's so insane how you can do all that. How you can just change all these backgrounds and everything. Yeah, I mean, and honestly, I, that's where I didn't know at first. I was trying to look online and I couldn't figure out how to change some of the settings and I didn't realize that you could see. So you have to slide these buttons over to be able to get to the rest of the buttons. Which is where you're gonna find your settings, very important. And what's really nice too is anytime I'm driving the car, it don't matter if I'm going 40 or whatever, you can switch your cam. You can actually switch the side view, which obviously I don't have a side camera or a front, but I do have the rear. That's awesome. So it's nice. I mean, if you wanna see if someone's riding your butt, or the Popo, right? <laughs> 1520 band parametric EQ. So it's got a parametric EQ, which is pretty awesome. Sony has that as well. And then it's got all these perimeters where you can do your low pass and high pass. And then you've got all this to where you can change, you know, pretty much the staging of where you want everything into the vehicle. Which is really nice for people that have kids. You, you got a for control. <laughs> Jesus, man, this thing's got everything. Most of these do not have this. Most of them just got bass, treble, high. That's it. Or you know, bass mid high. That's it. And so I, and I can can I can actually mute one speaker. So if my daughter's in the back passenger side, I can awesome. actually mute Look that, that speaker. Isn't that crazy? This has got a lot of features for a good amount of money. I mean, you do get a lot for what you pay for these radios. So what I'm guessing.